We are live. Welcome to The Lion Show. I'm your host, your favorite business coach, Robert Lyon. And today, we have the great pleasure of interviewing Chris D.T. Gordon. He is the man, the myth, the legend. He's just got a great personality, great life, and uh, he's got some cool gratitude stuff that he wants to let everybody know and more things to talk about. So, Chris, why don't you just uh, jump in, tell everybody who you are and what you're all about. Thanks, Robert. First of all, thanks for having me on the show. I really am looking forward to it, and I, I, I've been following you for a little while, so I greatly appreciate you having me on. Um, so I am a special education teacher for an online middle school. I've been doing the online teaching thing before it got cool, you know, before pandemics and stuff. Um, I am uh, married to my wonderful sweetheart, Becky, and we have three fantastic but loud kids. Sorry if you hear something in the background. Uh, we live in New Orleans, Minnesota, and uh, we are enjoying life as much as we can. Um, besides being an online teacher, I am also a survivor of necrotizing fasciitis, which is a fancy way of saying flesh-eating bacteria. You may have heard of it recently with the story of Alex Smith from the Washington football team. It's uh, what sidelined him. Uh, well, actually, after being uh, has having his leg broken a couple years ago, he actually developed NF uh, from the uh, football field and uh, has recovered since then. Obviously, but that's where it's been getting some recent popularity. Man, well, I definitely want to just say you're fighting the good fight, and that is a terrifying sounding disease, man, or whatever it is. It sounds awful. Yes, uh, you know, for a comic book fan like me, it's a ready-made origin story. <laughs> you know I, i'm thinking well i could either get be bitten by a radioactive spider or i can pick up some horrible flesh eating bacteria disease that can get me flayed like a fish and so i went for the latter i actually look like a discount deadpool oh yeah the discount deadpool <laughs> yeah i mean you can see here and then i have uh all the way up here um oh. I get to my chest to my back and yeah man and then uh when I when I uh, walk around at the beach, it looks like I'm winking because I'm missing a nipple. <laughs> so that's always fun. Not the nipple, man. That's yeah, I know exactly. But if there's ever <laughs> nipple tax and you know installed, I'm going to save so much money. <laughs> Looking out Crazy. for the future, man. Exactly. Uh, well, you know, it's all about planning. Yeah. Um, so have you found anything like just to like help it, or is it just kind of an ongoing battle, or what is it like? You know, once the NF is, you know, is debrided and extracted from your body, you are clear to go from the NF itself. But yeah. <laughs> when I, I had ex, uh, endured those surgeries after they cleared out all the infection, that's when they had to start taking skin grafts off my thighs and my back. I also needed a, a 15 inch by four inch flap of skin removed from my left thigh and placed on my right hand and forearm. And since it's my thigh on my hand, I call this my fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's copyright pending. And you can, you can actually see copyright. that hair is a little longer here oh, than man. it is on my other parts of my, oh, I don't have any hair there, but yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it is, I mean, there, there are some lasting effects. Like for example, uh, skin grafts are non-porous. So yeah. I don't yeah. sweat. In a huge portion of my body and as a runner especially in the winter and the summertime i really need to be careful that i don't overheat i mean right now i can feel the heat emanating from within my arm and my right side here so i have to be careful and for example when i go on long runs i sometimes bring a water bottle with me and i squirt the skin graft areas periodically to rub water on it so it doesn't overheat Wow. So I saw that you like do black belt and Taekwondo and you do running. Yes. Have you done all that? Like since you've gotten the, the skin thing or was that all before or is it all still to go in? I, I ran, uh, yeah, I ran before I was in the hospital. In fact, I ran a pie day race, which is for ner for math nerds, uh, 3.14 miles because it was on oh, March pie. 14th. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I ran that race a week before I was in the hospital. And I logged a time of 19 minutes, 29 seconds, which is a low six minute mile average. Uh, so going from running that to struggling to make it across the hall and back in my hospital room, you know, when I, when I was recovering, 
was a, a bit of an ego uh, buster. You know, you really have to you look at yourself and say, okay, this is where I'm at now. Don't worry about where you, where you were. Um, but since then I have actually set four, uh, set or tied four personal running records. And I'm currently training for uh, qualifying for the Boston marathon within the next 10 years. I am not a good marathon runner uh, compared to my other distances. So I'll give myself time to train and do it the right way. Cause I've run a couple of marathons, but I was stupid about it and try to rush the, rush the training. And you don't want to do that. Well, at least you're running, man. I don't have any excuse for not running and you're over here busting your butt doing it big, <laughs> man. That's so good though. So Thanks. yeah, I guess I, I really like to hear just like, I mean, you have an inspirational story and it's kind of turned into kind of your, your brand about gratitude. So if you want to just kind of go into that direction of like how, what it means to you and kind of what your thoughts are on it, I'd love to hear them. Certainly. So I was in a coma for five days while the doctors were trying to save my life, save my right arm and get me back to where I could be a semblance of my former self. But uh, so while I was recovering, all these people, as my wife would later tell me, were coming to our aid. People were donating food to us um, for the first couple of weeks of my hospitalization my wife and the kids stayed with her parents who lived in the same town as the hospital. I went to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and they lived there. And so they stayed with mom and dad for the first couple of weeks. People would drop off toys for my kids. They would drop off meals for them to eat. My brother flew in from Michigan, where we both grew up, to be with my family for the first week. He even gave me an iPad so I can watch things on, you know, with the Wi-Fi there. Uh, a friend of my wife's from high school created a GoFundMe account to help offset medical expenses because I ran out of sick days being in the hospital for so long. When she told me all of the, all of the things that people were doing for me, I was filled with such gratitude, Robert, that I, eventually, I felt that any sort of negativity or sadness or anger that I would feel toward my situation would be a slap in the face to anyone who stepped up to help us. Wow. And it was right there where I developed what I now call the attitude of gratitude or TAG for short. Uh, being a school teacher, you know, I, when I used to work in a brick and mortar school, you know, kids would go outside and play TAG. And the thing about TAG is if you, it's very boring to play by yourself or, <laughs> or so I'm told. Uh, so you want to pass it to others. That's how tag is played. And so I developed this really simple system of developing gratitude and sharing it with others. Um, the first step is the T, which is think about all the big things and small things in your life that you are grateful for. Now, when I was in the hospital, of course, I thought of my faith, my family, my house, my job, you know, our friends. Those are all big things. Those are things that, you know, that really come to people's minds when you are wondering, oh, what am I thankful for? But it's really the small things, the seemingly insignificant things that really make our daily lives worth, you know, worth living and trying to make the better. Like, for example, I have this uh, pen here. Now, usually you wouldn't say, oh, I'm so thankful for this pen, but Think about the last time you need to write something down and one wasn't nearby. Right. When you see it, you you are thankful that you have it and you can write something down. I'm uh, thankful for my charging cord here. And we all know <laughs> in this day and age how important this little guy is. Because when you don't have one and you really need it, that's when things go awry. And so by counting all the small things and big things in our lives, we find that while we may not, you know, be Scrooge McDuck swimming in a money bin, we really are rich. There are so many things going for us. And so that's, that's the first step. That's the T. Because once you start developing that sense of gratitude, that's when you start thinking about the people in your life. And you want to share with them how you appreciate what they do for you. And that's the A. That's the acknowledging the appreciated. And... Yes, again, we can go back to the family and the friends and think about how much they mean to us. But in the hospital, the people that really 
resonated with me in terms of my gratitude for them were the medical professionals and the hospital staff. Because obviously they did their job. I'm here. <laughs> but it's the way they did it that really stuck with me. They, some of them became my friends. And even if they hadn't, we were really friendly and we developed a strong respect for each other. One day I was lying in the hospital bed because I really couldn't do much else. And when you're in the hospital for a long stretch of time, like I was, they sometimes have you fill out that getting to know you poster that they put on sometime on the wall, or in my case, the bathroom door. Well, one of the questions that was asked was, what's your favorite movie? Now, Robert, you could probably guess what I might have picked. <laughs> you know, the posters and the sweater and the transformer and back there i chose blazing saddles oh because <laughs> i wanted it i was thinking what's a movie that i could watch over and over again and not get sick of and if you're a person of a certain age like i am blazing saddles hits all the marks it's funny it's actually a striking social commentary it's mel brooks you, you can't lose well i put that on the poster one Monday morning, the head nurse, whose name was also Chris, she came in and she was all a Twitter, just excited as could be. And she ran up to my bed and said, Chris, I was thinking about you this weekend. I saw this in the garage sale and I had to get you this. She hands me a DVD copy of Blazing Saddles. Nice. That is not in her job description. I am merely a, an item on her checklist but she thought of me in such a way to get me a gift. And while I do have my own copy of Blazing Saddles, the copy she gave me is one of my prized possessions because of the fact that she thought of me enough to get it for me out of her own volition. And, and so that really stuck with me. And so it was, you know, the medical professionals, the staff, and, you know, even the strangers who donated money to the GoFundMe account that was set up and donated toys and food. And, and so I wanted to share with them my appreciation. And so I did it. I did so as much as I can. And today it's, you know, thanking people for a lesson they may have taught you years ago. It's, you know, people who open the door for you. Anytime you can share your gratitude with someone, you should do it because studies have shown you know, that the benefits of gratitude not only benefit the beneficiary, they also benefit the benefactor because it shows that your efforts are not lost in the ether. You know, people do appreciate them. And, you know, it turns out that if you thank someone for doing something nice, they tend to do it again. Right. You know, that's wow, what we want. Wow. It took a nice me a little roller coaster out. there and I really appreciate yeah. it. I mean, Definitely. I think gratitude is just such a, a thing that, you know, you can't hear enough about. You need, you need to spread the message as much as possible. And in like the woo-woo land, you know, gratitude is the most powerful vibration that you can really have in your life and in yourself. Um, what was G? G is the, this is where the game of tag really gets going. It's the giving someone else a reason to be grateful. So it's giving? Now, yeah, giving someone else a reason to be grateful. Now, as you can imagine, I really couldn't do a lot of good in the hospital. I could, you know, I, I, I could I give to people's GoFundMe accounts on the iPad that my brother gave me. I could comment on people's posts and stuff, but there wasn't that much I could do physically. But it was when I was discharged that I started looking for ways of doing this. So as a runner, whenever I go running, I try to pick up any trash that's on the ground, on the road, in someone's yard, you know, without like walking up into their backyard and, you know, picking up their trash over the place. But I want to, I want to beautify the neighborhood as much as I can while I'm on my run. Uh, we have some neighbors who just had twins. And as a fellow dad of twins, I know how much of a struggle that can be. And so if, you know, if their lawn is getting a little long, I'll mow it for them. If, you know, they need their walk or their driveway shovel. They'll shovel it for them. You know, there's always the classic holding a door for someone that's, you know, that's coming up on your six, you know. And the beautiful thing about those items and so many more is they cost nothing. It costs zero monies 
to be a hero for someone, yet for that person, that, that uh, beneficiary, it could be priceless. I mean, that we never know what someone's going through at any given day. And a, an act of kindness like that could really make their day or, or their week. You never know what people are going through. Right. And so I, I, I try to, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I wish I was doing more grateful stuff now, you know, (laughs) all the time. It's just like, it's a good thing to pass along and keep going and, you know, feel gratitude. And I just love it, man. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And so, you know, and as I um, have been on this journey, starting with the previous year of becoming a speaker and, and trying to exemplify the attitude of gratitude, I've, you know, found other ways of doing so. And some of them do cost money, but it's not like you have to, you know, you have to take all the money out of the bank to do something nice. You know, it could be uh, sending an anonymous gift card to someone. Right. It, you know, it could be, uh, you know, if you're in like uh, here in Minnesota uh, last month, there was that story, I think it was in Brainerd, where 900 people were uh, paid meals forward to each other in a Dairy Queen takeout line. You know, the drive through 900 people participated in paying for the next person. Yeah. And it's something yeah. like that, you know, uh, sometimes when we drive to Michigan on the tollway uh, between uh, Illinois and Indiana, you know, we'll pay for someone's toll behind us. Nice. And, nice. It's, you know, maybe a dollar and a half, maybe 80 cents. But to that person, that could be something that could really make their day. Yeah. So since you've kind of embodied uh, this gratitude in your life and in everything you do, have you noticed, um, I, I mean, in changes, have you noticed like a uh, a big sense of power or anything like that? Like, what are you, what have you sensing when you, when you do this now and you brought it into your life and you bring it into others' lives? You know, personally, I feel a, a, a change in terms of how I interact with others. Like for example, on, you know, on social media, I have my own thoughts and feelings about the world and how it should be run, but I now have a personal responsibility to be the best I can be. And even though I may want to comment a certain way to someone, I have to remember that I am, my message is bigger than me. I need to show that I can be the change that I want to see in the world. We've heard that so many times before. So I find myself maybe, you know, starting right out something, but quickly deleting it. And, you know, if I need to get out, you know, get out from some frustration about something, I'll, I'll lace up my shoes. Uh, actually, I, I use uh, elastic laces. Uh, trust me. If you're a runner and you're not using elastic laces, you're, you get elastic laces. Okay, sorry. <laughs> a running soapbox off. Uh, but you know, I'm. Uh, you know, I get. I get that frustration out of me some way, and I find that I spend a lot less time on social media because I'm not responding to so many people's uh, comments or arguments that to which I don't agree with. Um, but I also feel that I am a better person and a role model to my kids and my students, because if I am not, if I am not exemplifying the attitude of gratitude, if I'm not, if I'm not playing tag, no one else will. Yeah. And I, th- I think that's fantastic. So um, you, you've been doing public speaking before the whole COVID thing hit and how, how is that going? Cause I think you, you got to share the message. It's a wonderful message. So well, know. thank you very much. I appreciate that. I have been, uh, I, I start, I decided that I was going to be a professional speaker January 1st of last year. Oh, <laughs> and I had, and I had, uh, I had held my own event at my church here in New Ulm and it went pretty well. And then, of course, three weeks later, hey, uh, this thing from China, it's coming here. It's going to stay for a while. (laughs) So uh, that's when I pivoted a bit and I started my podcast. But I still send out emails to schools every week. I'm still talking with colleagues about sharing my message. And I'm actually in the post-production phase of an online course that I wrote uh, based on the the attitude of gratitude. And it's a three-week course, which I, uh, I created daily videos. I offer a daily practice for everyone. I created a little journal that people can use and they can journal down uh, various things they're thankful for, people they are, they are grateful for, things they're gonna do to help other people and as a way for people to develop a long lasting practice that they can share with others. 
That's awesome, man. So what is a, what's a daily practice that you kind of teach people? How does that look like? Well, um, personally, when I, when I do get on social media, I will on either a Monday or a Thursday, I will write something that I'm thankful for. Um, and Tuesday and a Friday, I will uh, acknowledge someone whom I appreciate. And then on Wednesdays and Saturdays, I will write down a way for people to give back. And so that's a practice I've been doing for a couple of months now. And I, I, I feel, uh, I feel unfulfilled until I do that post, you know, it, yeah. it's a way for me to reach out and do that. I have been working on, uh, putting my message in print. And in fact, I'm excited to say that I am now a co-author. Um, oh, nice. I, I participated in the third volume of, uh, blue talks presents business life in the universe. And you can find it on Amazon, and I share my story, my message here. And uh, I have also, as you said before, I have my podcast where I share others' messages. And I think I, that's a big way for me to give back is to help others share their messages. Because as we found in this last year, there are all kinds of ways that people are struggling. And the, then on top of that, people are struggling alone with quarantine and all those other things, social distancing, that we are, you know, we, we have to be a little more separated from each other. But by sharing others' messages, I found that I can help bridge those gaps and make it easier mm -hmm. for people, at least not to connect, to commiserate and to find a kindred spirit that may help them in their current struggle. Love it, man. Well, that book has some big words in it, man. So what is the, what is that book about a little bit more? It's business life in the universe. That's, those are some big yes. topics. <laughs> well, there are a number of uh, different uh, uh, co-authors. You can see in the back here, lots oh, of wow. different stories. Um, you know, and they talk about uh, stories ranging from uh, here. I'll, I'll go to the, uh, the index here. Uh, thanks for showing up. People who have uh, been a, a driving force in someone's life just from being there. Uh, the emotional entrepreneur, the burdens we carry, um, you know, silver lining. So it's, it's a lot of, fi you know, finding positive uh, aspects in a negative situation, business, you know, business tips, uh, ways to positively affect others' lives. Wow, man. I think that's awesome. So this is kind of kind of random, but so I was in Colorado and there was this, uh, there was a fire and there was smoke everywhere, man. And it was like, couldn't breathe outside. And then everywhere I went, everybody's wearing masks now for coronavirus, you know? And I just think that we should really be grateful for being, being able to breathe without masks and without smoke everywhere. So do you have any advice for people to start running more or to get active? You know, I think the best way to do it is to first set a goal for yourself, but but make it, make it something small, uh, but, you know, small and reasonable. But secondly, schedule it. Schedule yeah. your workouts. Put the race date or the uh, goal, the goal date uh, in your calendar. Because if you don't schedule it, you won't do it. Um, and then, you know, if you are a beginning runner, find help. You know, you could go to, uh, you know, like coach to 5K has a number of great uh, programs for people. You can go to running magazines like uh, Runner's World. You can just ask a friend who runs. The thing about we runners is we love to talk about running. <laughs> All right. Good. It's kind of like, like CrossFit people, you know, you know, you know, a runner, you know, someone's a runner because they'll tell you. Right. <laughs> so that's good. I just yeah. thought it was, you got to be grateful for every breath nowadays, you know, breathing is such a key thing. Um, so tell me a little bit about Taekwondo and we'll talk some more about some other things. I just want to know about your journey with that. Cause I think that's cool. Yeah. So when I was in middle school, I started Taekwondo and I advanced pretty far. I made it to a Brown belt, which is over half with a black belt, but like a lot of high school kids, I got stupid and distracted and I quit. Well, when the, the fall after I was hospitalized, my older son, Josh, decided he wanted to start Taekwondo. And I didn't tell him this at the point at the, I, when he started, but I thought, well, if he stays in it for a year, I'm going to, I'm going to ask him if I could join him. 
because it's always been a regret of mine that I didn't get my black belt. So a year came up, he had reached green belt, which was about a third of the way. So uh, maybe 40%. So I said, okay, Josh, is it okay if uh, I join you in Taekwondo? And he was all for it. So I talked with the master, I told him my background and he allowed me to join where Josh was. And so fast forward four years later, I am now a recommended black belt. Nice. And I am currently training for my final test as a black belt. And it's going to be, I'm, I'm planning on this time sometime this year. Uh, there are a couple things I need to do uh, in order to se secure the test, but uh, that's what I plan to do. And I, I really uh, appreciate Taekwondo for the added focus because it's, it's a great way, you know, besides running, to focus my energy and technique. And it's a great way for me to show that, you know what, as a guy in his mid forties, you can do this. There's, you know, the only person holding you back is you. Yeah. Everybody who does martial arts gets disciplined. You know, there's just so many benefits to it. They just kind of learn from it. Well, that's freaking awesome, man. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Why don't you tell everybody uh, like the best way to get in contact with you and kind of uh, where you are online. Certainly. And, and thank you, Robert. So the, probably the easiest way to find out what I'm up to is go to link tr.ee forward slash Chris D T Gordon. That's my link tree account where you'll find my podcast, my YouTube channel, my speaking websites, my YouTube, and I am sorry, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, and a couple other things. I also have a link to the book you can find on there. Uh, that's the first place I would go. Uh, you can also find me, like I said, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, both under Chris DT Gordon, as well as, linked, uh, as, well as uh, LinkedIn. And uh, just reach out. I'm happy to talk with people. And if you are a school administrator looking for someone to speak with your kids, either virtually or online, or virtually or in person, please connect with me. Uh, being a nine-year veteran of online teaching, I know a thing or two about talking with kids over a computer. That's awesome, man. So I guess I just want to end on some, just one more question just about gratitude. Like what, is, what does gratitude really mean to you? Like just give us your definition. My def definition of gratitude is finding the riches that are already in your backyard. Because we can always go looking for, looking for something else. But if we just look around ourselves now and see everything that makes us happy, things that we are blessed that we have in our lives, even though me, we not, I don't enjoy having this pen here. You know, it's not like I, I, I'm like, yes, I have a pen, but I'm <laughs> thankful for it. Yeah. The more I, I do that with every single thing in my life, I find that I don't need a million dollars to consider myself rich. Yeah, man. Such a good message. Such a good time. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I think everybody got incredible value out of that. Um, and yeah, pay it forward, everybody, if you're listening. <laughs> All right. Thank you Thank so you much, Robert. Much. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Okay, bye.